right, so the next step in our ranger station project is creating a structural grid for our project. So like we discussed earlier, a structural grid is basically a grid that um, of numbers and letters uh, denoting the structural grid for the project, and it organizes basically the locations of our columns. All right, so that is kind of what our next step here in the, our project. And so what we've got is we've got a series of um, column grids. We've got numbers going vertically and um, letters going horizontally. All right, so let me go back to our Revit project file. And so you're going to create your column grids in a uh, floor plan. So I'm going to go to our lowest floor plan, which is 00, zero foundation. So I'm going to double click on that. All right. And then the grid command is no located right next to our level command All right, on the architecture tab. And it's about 3 quarters of the way over. And it's called grid. So I'm going to click on that. All right. So what you get is you get a couple draw tools. You've got to pick lines. You've got a line command. And then you've got your offset here on your options bar. So I'm just going to draw our first one, which is that um, with that uh, number one. All right, so I'm going to kind of go over here to the left, and I'm just going to click and draw a line, just like I'm drawing a, just a single line. All right, and I click a second point there, and there's my column grid. Now you notice in the handout here, I've got the grid bubble on top, and uh, and nothing at the bottom. So let me show you how to fix that. So when you draw it, it basically depends on where you start. Uh, start the grid. For example, if I were to start at the bottom and go to the top, the, the column, the little bubble would be at the top, not the bottom. All right, so uh, what I want to do is I want to switch that. So I'm going to select my column grid, and once you select it, you'll see this little check, this little box up here. And you basically want to click on that box, and that'll put a check mark in there. And then basically you'll see how you've got the one at the top now. So I've got my column bubble at the top, and I'm going to uncheck it at the bottom. So I uncheck it at the bottom, Check it at the top, and there's my uh, um, column grid uh, number one. Okay, so uh, on here, it gives you a spacing in the handout. If I move on to page uh, five. So across the top, we've got six, and uh, it gives you the spacing here. So there's a couple ways of doing this. Um, there's a couple ways of doing this in here, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the copy command. Okay, so we've got our column grid one here drawn. All right, there it is. Okay, so there's a couple different ways. I'm going to go through basically all the ways I can think of to draw this column grid. So the, the other way of doing it is then going to column grid and using the offset. So I'm going to click on pick lines, set an offset, and set an offset to whatever my next column grid is going to, is going to be. All right, so the next one is 16, 16, 20, 16, and 24. All right, so the way of doing that is I go pick lines, all right, the next one is 16 feet over. All right, so I do that, hold my cursor over it, and you can see which line is good, which side of the uh, of the column grid it's going to offset to, well, the right or the left. All right, so there's two. All right, then the next one was 16, then the next one was 20, and I think the next one was 16 and 24. All right, so that's one way of doing it. And then you'd of course have to go, oops, you'd have to go back and move your column grids to the top. So check that. So check the box at the top. So that's one way of doing it. And that's just using the offset command with the pick lines. The other way of doing it is pick it, copy it, and moving it over, uh, let's say 16 feet, then copy again. Yeah, yeah, that's another really good good feature too. Is that it automatically understands that you're doing these consecutively in order, so it'll go to the next one is three, all right? So sixteen, all right? So that's just using the copy uh, command here. Uh, another way of doing it then uh, is to use the array command. So I'm going to do the array command. So I'm going to pick this one. This is the array command here with these little four squares. All right, and when I use the array command, you want to uncheck this group and associate uh, box here. And we're going to create six of these. All right. And we're going to either move to the second or the last. So basically, if I move to the second, it goes to the second position here. If I And I'm going to say 16 inches. I'm sorry, 16 feet. And it creates six uh, column grids at 16 feet. 
Then what I can do is to fine tune those, I can use the, my dimension command, so I go to the align dimension, select each of those column grids, alright, and then I can just move them in order. So these first two are at 16, this third one, I'm sorry, the, the, sorry, the fourth one was at 20, alright, the next one was at 16, All right, so what I'm doing is I, 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 I want to move number four over. So I pick number four, and then when you select number four, column grid number four, the dimension turns blue. You can see the, the 20 turns blue, so I, I can edit that, that uh, dimension. So for example, column num grid number six should be 24 feet away. So I select column grid number six, and I can um, edit this dimension here now. So I can do it to 12, and I change that to 24. And now I've got my column grid spacing uh, across the top. Okay, so you did not go to annotate. You went to modify? Yeah, so I went to, um, well, what I did was to move those, what I did is I selected the column grid. Right, but to get the dimensions in order to move them, where did you go? Oh, okay, to get to the dimensions, uh, I went to the annotate so tab. You did go to the annotate. Yeah, okay. and I used a line dimension, and, aligned. Okay. and I just kind of picked each, each column grid. So let me do that same one um, using the horizontal, uh, doing my horizontal column grids. So I'm going to go to the architecture tab, go to the grid command. All right, I'm going to draw a horizontal one. So I click there, go across. All right, now I'm going to change this to A instead of 7. So to change that, I'm going to double click on 7 and change it to capital A. All right, and I'm going to use my array command. All right, and uncheck group and associate, and let's say I think there were maybe 10 of these. I'm going to say move to second, and let's see what's kind of the common spacing here. About 16 as well. All right, so I'm going to move this one down 16 feet. 16 feet. All right, and notice too, on this one, since I numbered this, or I called this one A, it went to B, C, D. All right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dimension all of them. So I'm going to go to the dimension command, so click on there. I'm going to use a line dimension. I never use linear dimension. Linear dimension just gives me trouble, so I always use just a line dimension. And what I do is I'm going to dimension each of these column grids all the way down. All right, and then, uh, so then to renumber these, go back to here. I'm going to move this one over to the other screen so I can see it. All right, so the first column, so between A and B is 10 feet. So what I want to do is I'm going to pick column B because I want to move B, and I'm going to change that from 16 to 10 feet. And then between B and C, it's 16 feet, so I'm going to move C. So I select C, and now I can edit the dimension, and that's 16 feet. And then between um, C and D, it's another 16 feet, so I select column grid D, and then edit the dimension. So the, the process here is pick the column grid, then edit the dimension. A lot of times I see people, um, when, uh, when they're doing this, they try to edit the dimension string. So they double click on the dimension string and you'll get something like this. So uh, the idea here is that Revit will edit that dimension string, but it just needs to know what, which, which side it needs to pull from, wh which one of these is moving. So select which one is moving, then go to the, then select the dimension, then you can edit that dimension. So between D and E, we got another 16 feet. So I go to 16. All right. Um, between D and E, and then between E and F, there's another 16 feet. Beginning to see a pattern here. All right, 16, 16, and then between G. Now H is missing on here. You'll notice H is missing. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to delete H. I don't need J. All right, so then what I've got to do is going to get G, all right, 16 feet, and then this is going to be 32 feet. All right, so there's my column grid here. And what you probably want to do is, uh, is these, these looks like these vertical column grids are probably not as, are not as long. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to select that vertical column grid and you got a little blue grip or a little grip here, which is this little circle. 
So I'm going to hold my cursor and pull down on it, and I'm going to pull those guys through. So you can realign these, um, these grids here using your little grips. The little grips for the column grids are these little circles, these little open circles. If I want to move it on this side, I select the column grid and see the little open circle there? Then I can just pull across and kind of widen that a little bit. And notice these are all locked together. So when you move one, they all move together. Okay, so this is, uh, so this is another really important um, thing here on the column grids. So your column grids basically are, are going to be where your columns are located. So you're going to locate your columns. Your columns are going to snap and lock to the grid points, so the intersection of each grid point. So if one of your grids accidentally gets nudged or bumped or anything like that, it's going to pull your columns with it. And your columns uh, and your walls are attached to these grids as well, so it's going to start pulling walls with it. So if you accidentally bump one of your column grids, it's going to really mess up your drawing. Um, and so the more information you put on your drawings, the later you find that mistake, the worse it gets because you're adding doors, you're adding windows, and you're, then when you add your roof and all that kind of stuff, uh, it totally screws, it screws up your roof. So you want to make sure that you don't accidentally bump or nudge or uh, move that column grid. So what you want to do is you want to lock that thing down. So let me show you how to lock it. There's two ways of doing this. First way is to pick your column grids. So I'm going to pick my vertical column grids. All right, so I'm going to select them all. And you can use what's called the pin command. That's it there. So I, once I select it, it shows up on my ribbon. It looks like a little push pin. Uh, you have to unlock it, then edit the dimension. So once, you, so once you've edited the dimensions and you get it all the dimensions correct, then I would pin it down and then, uh, and then, uh, and then never touch it again. <laughs> It should, if you, if you make the first one A, and then you keep copying down, it, it should make this next one B. So it knows that, it kind of gets the idea, oh, she started with A, so she's going to go on to B, C, D, and E. All right, so I selected all my column grids here, my, horse, my vertical ones, and I'm going to little, select a little push pin here. All right, so now they're all pinned down. So when I select one of these guys, it's pinned. And so when I try to move it, it's not going to let me do it. So I select it, I go to move. And it gives me a little warning. Can't move a pinned element. So it's not going to move. So you can't accidentally bump that. So I highly suggest doing that. I'm going to do that with my vertical ones now. So select all my vertical ones, hit the pin, and they're all pinned down. The other thing you can do is lock your dimensions as well. So you can select uh, your dimension string and see these little locks there? You can just lock those things down. So there, click there, click there. That also locks it, uh, your column grid down. All right, so that's your. Yeah, you don't need to do both. I think the probably the best one is the pinning, is pinning the column grids down. That probably the, works the best. Now, if you ever want to edit those column grids, you do have to unpin them first. So, for example, if I want to move, um, if these uh, column grid bubbles are too close to my building and I want to move them, maybe I do have to unpin them. But you only need to unpin one. So I select six, I unpin it, use my little grip, and they all move with it, even though. One, two, three, four, and five are all pinned. Then I move it, repin it, and I'm all set. All right, so I highly su suggest pinning those column grids down um, because if you do, if you do accidentally bump it, and it, you know, later on in the project, and you find out that you've bumped it a long time ago, it's a real big pain to uh, uh, to fix all that. Um, so, anyways, yeah. So that is the uh, column grid uh, command, and what you're going to do is you're going to load in columns. And then uh, once you load those columns into the project, then you're going to um, place them at each of the column grids.